Hey guys, how's it going? Burstfy here, and today we're going to be watching Dopa playing Graves. Uh, this is on the most recent patch, I believe, from about a week ago. And Graves vs Ivan. So the first thing to talk about, just as we're loading into the game and setting up level 1, is the Graves vs Ivan matchup itself. Um, so basically, Graves, Ivan, two top tier junglers uh, at the on the MSI patch, which is the patch before. Um, so the thing is, when Ivern is picked, and obviously you can see that um, Ivern was picked before the Graves, when Ivern is picked, even though, like this is with anything that's not meta, so basically how it works is, if something counts as something else during the meta, and then that thing is out of meta, if that thing is picked, then the counter is still applicable. So we don't actually know what the meta is going to be at the moment. Um, I have personally seen in solo queue that people are moving away from Graves and Ivern, but the thing is if the Ivern is picked and Graves beats Ivern, and Ivern's out of meta and Graves is out of meta, the matchup itself is still um, beneficial for the Graves. So they're either in the meta or out of the meta, it's actually very hard to say until you see pro play, because solo queue only tells you so much and patch notes only tell you so much um, and so obviously everyone, you know, they scramble to read patch notes but at the end of the day just because a champion got buffed or nerfed doesn't necessarily mean it'll be played because what people fail to realize a lot of the time is that League of Legends is not just a mathematical game there is a lot of um, interpersonal elements involved which is why you don't have a bunch of robots playing each other like chess uh, so for example, right, let's say that in this game Syndra kills Echo once Right, uses Flash Ghost and kills Echo, and Echo has both summoners left. You could say, oh, Echo died, it's a mistake. But what happens if Echo comes back to lane and gets three kills because Syndra doesn't have any sums, Graves ganks, they get a kill, and Graves gets an assist, that's an advantage, and then they use that to snowball and kill the Syndra, and that wouldn't have been possible if Syndra hadn't used Ghost and Flash to kill the Echo. So, a lot of the stuff is, is very... You can't just watch the game from front to begin, front to end. Uh, you have to really watch it in reverse. So for example, I've already watched this game and made a couple notes. So what you should do is you should look at what the result was. So win or loss, that's the basics. And from that, you can go, all right, well, they won. So why did they win? How did they get the nexus? Oh, they surrendered? Why did they surrender? So y you have to think about like that, kind of like you're analyzing a chess game. Anyway, so going into this, um, Graves vs Ivern. Graves vs Ivern is very similar in the sense that they both like to farm a lot. The key difference is Graves has more pressure early, and uh, Ivern has more utility and healing and peel in a team fight. So they're the two things. So in order for Graves to do well here, he has to pressure the Ivern early. And in order for Ivern to do well here, he has to basically react to the Graves. And this is why scaling versus like early game is not very good, because the only way Ivern can do well here is if Graves messes up. So while that will work at lower level play, I think we'll see a massive shift, like in general, in the in the global metas everywhere, that if there's an option between picking an early game and a late game comp, the better team will pick the early game comp, and the worst team will pick the scaling comp. That's what I think. So anyway, uh, we see here that he actually does go for a blue invade. The reason he's going to go for a blue invade is because the enemy top laner is a Yorick, and the enemy mid lane is a Syndra. Level 1. Yorick will most likely, um, I don't really know his kit very well, but he'll he'll be very useless unless he takes his W first, which doesn't make sense, um, because you just wouldn't do that in lane phase. And then Syndra, again, same thing, unless she takes W first, um, this, this wouldn't be a problem, and he sees her in lane as well, so there's no sort of danger that she's going to steal it. Yeah, Ivan could have been there, but like I already said, he outpresses Ivan, so he would have shoved him off the buff. Ivan might have got the smite off because he has the... Um, the he has his passive that means if he tags it and then smites it's instant but that's why Dopa went in a bit early so he sees Ivan again doing this, doing the basic shit so Ivan seems to have I would have said Ivan went wraiths and tagged them and then walked to his blue buff but at that point it's too late and now Grace is going to take his entire um, his entire topside jungle so potentially here Ivan could be in his jungle but um, that's really unlikely and yeah, so Ivern's actually gone all the way to enemy blue buff and taken that. So it is a match, but the difference is Ivern wasted a lot of time running up and down, and Graves got Wolves and Gromp, whereas Ivern only got the blue buff. So Graves has won early game so far. 
puts a second point in his queue because your W is really not useful unless you're ganking or like trying to basically go um, verse uh, a person. I don't know what it's called. But yeah, if you're PV, that's it, PvP. If you're PvPing, then W is good, but PvE, uh, it's not very useful because it's a lot of mana for no damage. Um, yeah, so now he's just continuing to farm. He knows that his bottom side jungle is there, but um, he could potentially swing through top side here, take his red buff. Yeah. And so he's going to take his red, probably going to go Krug's next. No, he goes for a top lane gank, doesn't work out. Um, so he decides to go Krugs, takes those, walks down to mid lane, cleans mid lane up. Goes down to walls that are still up because Ivan didn't take them. He's going to pull them towards the Grump so he can get a faster set onto the Grump. He then looks bot lane and probably a troll or a DC or something. I don't analyze that one too much. I mean, you know, it happens, but. There are there are more points in this game that are positive than than that. Um, okay, th he's gonna go back now, and he's gonna buy a um, dueling a uh, skirmisher saber. That's it. The red smite, the boots, and the two pots. The reason here that he didn't go, if we just back it up and pause it. So seventeen hundred. The reason here that he didn't go for berserker greaves is because Berserker Greaves 1100 and Skirmishing Saber 650, 1750, so he would have had to wait for gold, that's the first one. Um, secondly, he is looking at their comp going, alright, they have an Ivern, they have a Syndra, they have a Karma. Um, he's thinking Merc Treads here, potentially Ninja Tabby, but you look at the auto attacks, only Syndra and, and um, Talia, sorry not Talia, Zaya, are actually the threats. So he's decided to go for Merc Treads this game. Um, basically the, the trade-off is Berserker Greaves is more damage, faster clear. Merc Treads is like safer, so you'll die less and better chase potential. So that's the trade that he makes. Um, and obviously the magic resist is nice as well. But you'll actually see from his runes that I'll show at the end is that he took extra attack speed in his reds to make up for the lack of attack speed from Berserker Greaves and he's going to go Phantom Dancer so he doesn't really need the attack speed um, so yeah that's, that's why he's opted for, for Merc Treads so with that in mind he could go Merc Treads but again it's the same issue with the 650 that's really useless so he's going to go for um, Skirmisher Saber because if you can't buy tier 2 boots then you always go Skirmisher Saber the other alternative is core fields, but th again the problem is he'll buy core fields and have 615 gold left over, which is really unfortunate. So if he got like an extra 1 or 2 CS mid, we might see a change in his itemization. He might go for that, but yeah, I mean if he's only got 17, then his, his only real option is what he does, which is to spend 700 on long swords, 300 on um, boots, and then 650 skirmishes saver, followed by a pink ward. They're like the, that's the only real option you can take to make sure you're using all your gold efficiently because at the moment if he went back and he only spent like maybe 1450 or 14 yes yeah, so something like 1450 then he's not utilizing his gold properly and he's basically losing a lead of 250 gold and maybe he buys a pink ward so losing a lead of 175 gold which is pretty massive this early on in the game like 175 gold just to put it in quantity is about 12 cs um, give or take. No, that's retarded. Um, it's not 12 CS, yes, that's stupid. Um, it's about 6. Yeah, it's about 9 CS. Let's say 9 CS. Um, or just, you know, wolves plus chickens, half chickens. So he's basically giving up an advantage by not spending the gold. So, yeah. Let's ignore that. That was kind of. A, I, I, I'm very tired. <laughs> Let's see, buys. He's going to go into the enemy jungle because he just cleared it like at the start so he knows his rotation and we have to think about Ivern's rotation here is Ivern we know he went he went blue at the time that Graves finished clearing his jungle so then Ivern would have probably cleared his whole bot side failed to gank bottom I didn't actually see if he went bottom but let's just assume he failed to gank bottom uh, he's gonna recall and then his stuff isn't gonna be up so he's either gonna sit there and wait for it or he's gonna um, try and take Scuttlecrab bottom because Graves already took topside. 
So we can assume Ivern was Scuttle Crab when Graves was at base. So now Graves is running there because he'll either get there at the same time, or as we see here, it looks like Ivern was actually being a bit cheeky with his chickens. Um, there we go. So Ivan at the moment is completely destroyed. Um, Graves is almost level 6, Ivan probably only a tiny bit over level 4. Ivan's going to try and clear his topside jungle now, but Graves is going to clean that up pretty simply. If he invades, which I don't remember if he does. Um, okay, there's a fight top at 11.40 on the VOD, so that's 5 minutes away. So, I think he just farms. Oh no, he goes for a gank mid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he blows ghosts on Syndra, which is nice. TP comes in from Yorick, and he doesn't back out. And now he decides to run. Echo dies, and he runs away. So let's review this play, and why it was... Why it was done. So, he, he goes for the gank here, and he blows the ghost. At this point... With Echo's health, not level 6, with Graves' damage, not with tier 2 boots, not level 6, they should have just backed off. Objectively. This is not, oh, maybe he was trading something. This is a mistake. As soon as this TP comes in, and we know the TP comes in, because it's, it's on the map, you can see the ward on the map. We also see the visual bug uh, up here. As soon as this TP comes in, uh, they should have backed out. So he goes for a bit of extra damage, that's just greedy. And now it's a bit late because the channel is about a second in or a second and a half in, so they have to run. There was no way to actually kill that because Dopa, something you'll notice in solo queue is he never uses his flash aggressively unless it's like a super optimal situation. Like if it's just something like here, like, oh yeah, he can flash to get the kill, but then he might die, he was not going to do it. If it was like, oh, I can flash to get the kill and then take three towers, then he'll do it. But he'll almost never flash aggressively. Um... So there, they've they've busted it. Damn it! They've done a, done a. They blew the ghosts. They didn't back out. They got a bit greedy. Did a bit more damage. That's fine. But now they know Ivan's there. They know the TP came in. They should run down through, uh, river, down through river and try and recall somewhere near bot lane. Because worst case scenario, the enemy team chase them, and they don't assume that they've gone bot lane. Because why would you even run bot lane? That's such a stupid idea. Which is exactly why it's a brilliant idea. Um, so you run down somewhere like bot lane, river bush or something and then you you recall there and that's really good because it wastes the TP from Yorick they don't get anything for it, they've busted Syndra's health, she's gonna have to recall, if she doesn't recall then Echo's gonna recall, come back to lane and just kill her so they should definitely just walk away and recall here, bit of a mistake to run here, kind of, maybe they didn't see the TP but um, Yorick flashes forward and gets the free kill There's, there was nothing Echo could have done there and Gray's just gonna walk out so what you could say, or you could argue, is that maybe Graves did it like this so that he could cover the wave while Echo was recalling. Um, actually, yeah, yeah, that's actually what should have happened. So Graves, Graves was thinking to cover the wave here um, while Echo recalled, but the problem is Echo didn't run down river. He saw Graves going towards tower, so he decided to as well. So that was actually my bad. That's that's Echo's that's Echo's mistake. Graves made a correct decision to hold this tower. Um. So he's going to move his way to top side. He's given up on the invade now because of that sh those shenanigans mid, which is fair enough. I mean, he doesn't know if Ivan already took it at anyway because the timers are a bit off and the blue buffs up, so it's more likely that Ivan is top side than anything else. So what Graves can do now is he could clear this recall and then look for some pressure sort of bot side, try to clean up his route, uh, get some mana back, spend some gold. You could potentially see him saving for the. Um, the warrior enchant, which I actually forget the combined costs. I know it's 400 for core fields. Uh, hmm, don't actually know off the top of my head. Let me look this up. One moment. Wait, what? Wait, what? I'm so confused here. 
I literally just googled warrior. What what the hell is going on here? Oh, this website's gone to shit recently, man. What the hell? <laughs> oh, maybe you call it like skirmishes warrior. Maybe that will do it. Oh wait, this is Warrior. What am I doing? It's just got a weird picture. Okay. Um So yeah, five twenty five. Oh, okay, so yeah, that's what that's what he's doing. So he's waiting for nine hundred and twenty five, which if we look at his gold now yeah, so he only needs about two hundred more, so he's just gonna clear get the warrior enchant. Um and actually he won't have to recall here, so he could potentially do dragon or scuttle or invade bot side, so it's a good decision. You'll see a lot um of what Dopa does is He's he, he's very greedy. He's very greedy in solo queue, which is not necessarily a bad thing because it's controlled. But um, yeah, he basically relies on the fact that the enemy team is not good enough to punish him because he's just on another level. That the this sort of thing can work. But um, it's a good way to play and learn because you'll probably die a lot and lose a lot of games, and it'll be your fault. But that's actually the best way to learn. Um, sort of high risk plays. So yeah, so he finds the Ivern. Both the ultimate and I guess that's good because now he knows where Ivan is so his route's kind of predictable. Ivan's just going to stay in his jungle. Um, there was a chance that Ivan might be at base or like recalling but I think Graves knew he'd be there. And he's blown, um, the, also the other thing is um, the ganks with Daisy from Ivan are technically better than Graves because Graves has damage but no CC except his W. So something like a Daisy gank with like a binding or something on mid specifically could be really dangerous so blowing the daisy there is actually more beneficial uh, for him than the deficit of losing his ultimate cooldown so that is why he decided to to go for that trade but at the moment I think he's pretty he's pretty satisfied because he's at least 400 gold up on Ivan at least as well as a level and a half so He's he's basically thinking in his mind this game is over, right? They got the bot lane obviously lost. Look at the towers lost. Um, Zillion arguably kind of useless, but the Yorick's not really doing anything because he's Yorick. Um, he's not good just because you see high level. Like I don't even know if this Korean or Chinese, but just because you see high level people play. Actually, eight MS it's probably Chinese because he's he lives in China, I think. Uh, I'm not entirely sure on that one. But yeah, so just because you see it in high level play does not mean it's good. It just means they're either trolling or they're testing something out. So he goes for a full clear here. It's kind of boring stuff, just standard. This is a, and you'll see this. This might look like deja vu. It's exactly what he did last time, and then he went for a gank top. So we'll see if he does it again. I think he's just autopiloting at this point. Yep, goes for a gank top again. And so as you can see, they're the daisy gank coming in, so that's just kind of highlighting what I was saying before. And he's now got enough gold for this, he's probably going to buy like a phage. Oh, he hasn't got enough for phage. He's going to buy phage components. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is pretty basic. Um, I guess I'll cover it. I guess I'll cover it. So, Graze goes for a gank top. Actually, we'll go further back. So, Yorick's about to get di uh, about to dive the Zillion, and it happens. But Graves up here; he's going to clean it up. He knows that Ivan's in the bush, and he's thinking about flashing here. That was a mistake from him, technically, because uh, he could have he could have flashed and done it. But I would say that. Again, this is something that Dopa does, is he doesn't want to use his flash, he will save it. So that could technically be a mistake, but I think he just foresaw the damage coming out from Echo. Um, I don't know, I'm trying to like pick pick holes in what he's doing, but I mean, at the end of the day, he's the I think he personally is the best player in the world in terms of solo queue, because most people that are either watching this or get coaching from me or whatever, they just want to get better at solo queue. So I think definitely, if you just copy everything Dopa does, then you'll that's the highest rank you'll ever get. And if you don't get Challenger, well then you are never gonna get Challenger. Like this guy is the best player in the world in solo queue, I think. 
So he checks the jungle. Nothing there. This is kind of awkward for him because he hasn't got anything to do. But he sees the top lane tower. He sees the farm. And he's just cleaning it up. Um, at this point, the game is basically over. It might not seem like it's over. It's 5.11. Uh, it's only 12 minutes. But the game is basically over now. Uh, Yorick hasn't got the wave clear to deal with that. So he's going to be stuck top for a while. Graves is going to invade Ivan again. Just being annoying, basically. This is how you push a lead as jungle. Like, people under don't understand. Oh, hey, you always talk about winning lane as jungle. How do you do that? Um, basically, okay, I'll go through it quickly. So top lane, the way you win top lane is you get more CS. You have TP priority, which means you either TP better than your opponent or you waste their TP. So you make them TP back to lane so that you have TP priority. You also uh, call the jungler top. And on top of that, you want to either solo kill or pressure your, your thing. Uh, your your top lane to get the tower, that sort of stuff. So that's our top lane. Um, same with mid lane, except with mid lane it's less about teleport priority because usually if you take TP it's to get back to lane. It's more about like keeping the lane shoved but not dying to jungle ganks and keeping the enemy jungler mid and then roaming. And then ADC it's basically just get more CS than your opponent. That's literally it. Don't die, get more CS than your opponent. Support um, support and ADC, I feel like people separate them, but the whole concept of support and ADC is that they're one thing, they're one entity. So, as a support and an ADC, your job is to get your ADC, like, more gold than your opponent, and not die, ever. Um, that's all you have to do with ADC. You don't have to get your tower, you don't have to roam, you don't have to do anything. It's just about getting gold, getting to three items before your opponent, and staying higher level. <sighs> Like, that's all you have to do as a bot lane. And then jungle, the way you do it, is you out-farm your opponent, you out-gank your opponent, you out-pressure your opponent. There's a difference. Pressuring is not the same as ganking. If you're a Shaker, or like an Evelyn, then you're actually, just by farming, you're creating pressure. So, creating pressure, even though ganking creates pressure, creating pressure doesn't necessarily mean you're ganking. Uh, and also, you know, invading jungle, you know, whatever. Because the thing is, if you invade the jungle, you pull the enemy mid laner, or the mid enemy bot laner, or the enemy jungle, or the enemy top laner, or whatever. If you're pulling people out of their lanes, and you're, it's a win. So even if, if Gray's just like level 1, that's why it talks about, if he just walks in, and then Yorick and Syndra go missing from lane, then he can just run off, and he knows that Yorick and Syndra have either missed a CS, or they've lost lane position, like the, the physical standing position, like the micro in the lane. So it's a benefit. So Gray's has been pressuring this Ivan all game, which is why I chose this clip, is because it's a perfect example of how to pressure when you have an advantageous lane. Uh, I say lane, uh, matchup, I suppose, in the jungle. So another example would be something like Lee Sin Master Yi, that is very common at low elo, because everyone plays Lee Sin, and everyone thinks Master Yi's busted. Well, the, the key difference here is that Lee Sin's stronger early game. So all you have to do is Lee Sin, is clear your jungle, and then pressure, and then clear and pressure, and clear and pressure. And you'll either solo kill the, the Master Yi, or you'll just get an advantage, as I just described, of how to get an advantage. Um, and that's the other thing, is in solo queue, as long as you win your lane every game, then you'll climb. Because we've seen from the, if you just look at the challenger ladder, you look at, you know, there are top 200 players in every single region. The average uh, win rate is about 55 to 65%. So, if you're winning, you and you can assume these guys are the best players in the world because they're the top ranked solo queue players, like in solo queue anyway, best solo queue players in the world. Um, so, you can assume they're winning their lane almost every game more than other people, let's put it like that, and they've got a 65% win rate. So, yeah, sure, maybe you're not winning every game, but it doesn't matter. As long as every 20 games you win 11 of them, that's that's all you got to do. And if you're not winning 11 of them, um, and it's not just like unlucky, like you're actually just not winning them uh, straight up. It's because you you have some sort of area to improve. So you need to either watch VODs like this, improve yourself, or just get a coach. Um, or just give up. Uh, that's, that's another option. But yeah, I, I don't like people that sort of complain that they're sort of stuck in ranks. It's very irritating. Anyway, so a bit of a fight breaks out, but Abda doesn't really care. Um, obviously. I mean, that if you look at it from his point of view, right... In this situation, you see Yorick coming, Ivan coming, Syndra's mid, Karma's there. You can't get a kill. Like, Ivan's got too much peel, Yorick's too tanky, Karma's got too much peel. Like, there's nothing to be gained here, so he's just going to take the free gold. Because you might think, hey, why is he not going for a kill? The kill's not guaranteed. This wolf is guaranteed. It's free money. So, he's got 70 gold rather than 300 gold, but the 300 gold might not have happened and he might have died, so he's just he's just basically going, hey, you know what, we're just going to peace out of here, waste their time, whatever. Then the other team make the mistake of chasing, and they obviously punish him for it. And this is literally, 
This is interesting because Dopa is car is is killing them all, but he's not chasing. If he was if he was running at them, they would have just run away. Because that's how mindsets work in League of Legends. Is if you're being chased, even if you don't know if you can win the one v one, your initial instinct is to run away. The reason you wouldn't run away is either you're an idiot or you understand that you can kill the person. But when you're against someone like Dopa, or when you're this far behind as the enemy team, if Dopa was running at you, you'd be like, holy shit, he knows something I don't, and they'd run away. But because Dopa's running away, they're literally killing themselves. They're like, oh, he's running away, he must be weaker than us. And so they're chasing into him. The Syndra died for free, the Yurik died for free. They they ran at him. He's like, hey guys, you know, I I, I just want to talk, you know, I hey, I, I'm just taking the wolf, I'm, I'm, I'm peacing out. And they're like, no, nah, we want to kill you. It's like, alright, well, if you want to fight. Um, so that was kind of their fault. But I think it was the mind games from Dopey. You see this a lot. He's basically like his mindset is very good. Uh, a lot of high level players, the the mistake they make is they go for PvP way too much. Like if you had to choose between getting you know 15 CS or going for a 1v1 kill, the CS can't kill you. Like the CS aren't gonna like outplay you or dodge your auto attacks. Um, the 1v1 could go bad because it could turn into a 3v1 or whatever, um, or you could just lose, you can just mechanically mess up. You can't really mess up taking CS, like, unless you miss CS, but, like, <laughs> <coughs> I mean, if you're, if you're missing CS for free, then there's other things you can do. Like, no amount of coaching will help you, and you just work on your mechanics. Um, but, yeah, uh, so always, always go for the free gold, even if it's not as much, even if it's, like, 10 CS or a kill, go for the 10 CS, because... It's guaranteed. And the other team will, as you see, they just tilt into you. They'll just run at you. Um, so Dopa didn't do anything there. He's literally like, hey, I'm just going to take your wolf. Hey, I'm just going to... It's like poking... It's like when you're in high school and you sort of poke the big fat guy. Like, you know he can fuck you up. But, like, you're not... Like, okay, it's not... Okay, it's, it's like you're trying to fight some guy at school and you want him to fight you. And you're just sort of annoying and poking him. You're like, oh, hey, I want to fight him, but if I attack him... If I hit him first, then I'll get in trouble. But if it's just self-defense, then it's not his, it's not my fault. So it's like kind of provoking the enemy to run at him. He's like, hey, you know what? I'm just going to take your wolves. And the enemy's like, oh, well, don't, I don't, I don't want you to take my wolves. Oh, I'm just going to take your wolves. And they're like, well, fine, but don't take Grump. Oh, hey, guys, I'm going to take your Grump now. No, no, dude, I told you not to take Grump. Oh, hey, I'm going to take Scuttle Crab now. All right, that's it. And so they get fucking pissed off. They run at him, and he gets a free kill. Um, two free kills, actually, for his team. And that's what you got to do, is if you play the objectives, and people say, oh, objectives is like towers and whatever. No, like, every every CS is an objective. Every piece, everything that gives you a piece of gold is an objective. And if you play around the objectives, the enemies will come to you. The, the players will come to you. Like, I think, I think what a lot of people will benefit from, right, if you're sort of struggling to understand what I'm talking about, create a custom game and just sit. And, and have you and no one else, there's no bots, no people, nothing. Create a custom game on Summoner's Rift and just sit in base and watch what happens. And think about how and the game plays itself. You don't have to do anything. Any input you do is a positive. If you're AFK, like even in a ranked game, right? If you're AFK the whole game and the enemy mid lane is AFK the whole game and then you are playing Ash, you get level 6 just from like XP, AFK XP or whatever and then you ult and, and hit an ult and the guy dies or or even if he doesn't die, you just hit the ult, right? That is you having more of an impact than your lane opponent and that's what winning lane is and if you do that every game consistently even if, you know, the jungle is better than you, the enemy top lane is better than you, the ADC support, doesn't matter, if you're playing mid and you're doing more to help your team than the enemy mid, even if you lose you will win over 50% of your games and you will climb and if you play a thousand games with a 51% win rate then you'll eventually get challenger or 10,000 games or whatever right so outperform your lane opponent it's like poker right you you focus on the person opposite you on the table you don't play everyone you just focus on the one person and you go alright I'm gonna beat you and if you beat that one person then suddenly instead of having a 50% chance of winning because okay think about this let's say you flip a coin right 50% chance heads, 50% chance tails. But then let's say that for some reason, like, when it was a tails, sometimes the head, like, reaches around and just flips the coin over and just punches the tails in the face. And he just he's just more powerful. And it doesn't happen all the time. But, yeah, like, consistently he tries to do it. 
even if that's only like an extra 1% chance that it's heads, like it flips itself over or some shit, it's still more of an impact than the tails. So as long as you outperform your lane opponent, your, like statistically, your win rate, or your, your chance of winning, which is what your win rate is if you play enough games, like you'll see it, your chance of winning will increase, and therefore your win rate will increase. And if you maintain a win rate that is more than 50%, even if it's just 50.5%, you play enough games, you'll get challenge it. Um, that's why you see most people that have like 70% win rates will have less than 100 games a year, or they'll be smurfs, or something like that. But when you actually look at, you know, the top... The, the, when you look at people that are hard stuck in Diamond 5, they'll have a 50% win rate. Or they'll have like a 49% or a 51% or something like that. And they'll have like 4,000 games and they'll be Diamond 5. And you'll be like, how is that even possible? How are you so bad? It's because they've reached their skill limit and they're not increasing anymore. Um, either through lack of coaching, lack of effort, whatever. But that's the point. So what I'm trying to say here is Dopa outperforms his lane opponent almost every game. He lost lane... Um, in one particular game I saw, but I've only ever seen him lose lane like 10 times, and I've watched maybe a hundred of his videos, or no, more than that. I, I, I've, I've rarely ever seen him lose lane, to be honest. Um, and when he does, it's usually because of like jungler or lane matchup, or whatever, but whatever the reason, he's not outperforming his lane opponent. So, what I'm trying to say is, if you have two mid laners AFK, they're equal. If you have two mid laners CSing the same, they're equal. If you have two mid laners, CSing the same, fighting the same, trading the same, taking towers the same, except one of them is like Twisted Fate and he goes bot and gets a kill, then even though everything else is equal, and you've got like one assist, you're outperforming your lane opponent, you're having more impact on the game. And so that's why you're better than your lane opponent. So that's what he's doing here, is he's just pressuring. And sure, you know, his team is, is doing well, his bot lane won, his top lane went even, his mid lane went even. Um, but he's still doing his bit and people also try to overcarry which is a, a mistake in itself like you don't have to do too much like sure sometimes if you try to hard carry you'll win like more games like that's what people do when they smurf when like diamond people play in silver and bronze they'll have like 80% win rate so yeah it will give you a higher win rate but you don't need that and dopa doesn't need that and you find that he'll have a 70%, 80% win rate, even playing like this, going for the small stuff. You don't have to get 10 kills. You only need, like, one CS more than your opponent, and you're winning the game. And if you get one CS more than your opponent, same kills, same deaths, same levels, same towers, same assists, whatever, and you get one CS more every game, then you will have more than a 50% win rate, guaranteed, 100%. Try it out. Test it out in your games today, for free. Um... Yeah, so he's doing the same, like, route. You might see, like, a lot of this PvE stuff is just repetitive, and that's the thing, it's, like, it's not difficult. I don't think, I don't think Dope is, like, some super genius dude, whatever. I think it's about discipline. He makes himself get every CS. He makes himself, like, this is boring to me. This is, this is one of the reasons why I am really bad at playing League of Legends, is this is really boring. I don't like it. I prefer something like, um, Counter-Strike, you know, where you can just, you just basically run around and kill everyone. This is really boring to me, this PvE uh, element. But if you're serious about improving at the game, then this is, like, what you need to do. This is, like, you know, he... he I don't think he's... He started one fight mid, and that was the one fight that actually went poorly um, when Echo died. And then he invaded jungle, and that was good. But, like, he barely ever starts the fight. He's aggressive, but he's aggressive through his gold income, which people always think... Like, the easiest way to make gold, obviously, is kills, right? You could spend, like you know, 10 minutes farming, or like 20 minutes farming, get like a 10 CS lead, or you could just spend like 30 seconds going bot and get a triple kill, right? Obviously that's faster gold, but it's not reliable, and that's how you die, that's how you lose your lane, that's how you like throw. It's, you're basically going, hey, let me do this like 50-50, if I win then it'll be great, and if I lose it'll be shit. Um, you can do that, but, I mean, that's not what Dopa does, and Dopa's the best player in the world. So if that doesn't say it, then statistically it makes sense as well, as I've discussed already, about going for the like the guaranteed play over the, the sort of risky play. Um, see, like here, he, he's not even going to waste his ultimate because he knows that he can kill her without it. It's just stuff like that. It's little stuff about being greedy. Greedy is the best way to describe Dopa. He basically does everything he can within his power to not use anything and gain an advantage. Like there... If he used his ult before, he wouldn't have been able to live there, or he would have had to flash, and suddenly he's got no flash, no ult. Now he's only got no ult, and he got a kill. And he drew two people there. Maybe if he had his ult, he wouldn't have even invaded, because he knew he would have had to flash. 
And so look, he's jumped over the wall to escape, and straight away, he's into the dragon pit. Like, that was a bit of a mistake from him. I don't know why he dashed over the wall there. Um, but, you know, straight away, he's into the dragon pit. So, it's just efficiency. So that's, like, the whole purpose of Graves. Like, he's playing Graves perfectly. The win condition of Graves is, as I said at the start of this video, right, if you guys remember back, um, the win condition of Graves is you basically power farm efficiently and you're more aggressive than either in early game. So everything you do is like a connect the dots, you know? He's doing dragon, he's thinking about the next thing he's doing. He's not going, oh, maybe I can gank bot, maybe I can go top. He knows he's going to either recall or he's going to go mid. He knows what he's going to do here because he's looking at the map and he's got a plan. So he's like, all right, I did dragon, now I'm going to go bot. Now I'm going to do this, now I'm going to do that. He, he has a plan. And sure, like there, his plan was wrong. But it's about efficiency, you know? It's about making sure that you're going from, from this to that to this. You're not wasting any time. With something like uh, Ivern, not not Ivern, actually. Something like, oh, that was a bit of a mistake. Uh, we'll cover it earlier. But anyway, with um with someone like um, Kha'Zix, for example, right? You can be rewarded from just sitting in the bush and waiting for someone, right? On a pink ward. And just sit in a bush, wait for someone, kill them, whatever. With someone like Graves, it's about efficiency. It's about never stopping. You never wait in a bush for someone. You you, you want to always be moving. Now, I think he should have recalled a dragon, but he's clearly looking to push his advantage. He's a bit tilted because he... Well, not tilted, but he's a bit complacent because his team's winning so hard, so he doesn't respect that Syndra could be there. I think he thought he could 1v1 her, but he doesn't realize he doesn't have the red smite. And he also didn't flash the stun. So if we go back and watch this... So he doesn't even check the fact that Syndra could be there. And he's pressing tab. Here, he sees her. Here, he should just flash, straight up. If he flashes to, like, here, and then Q, auto, or whatever, and he has red smite, which he doesn't have. If he had red smite and he flashed, easy kill. Even without red smite, he could probably still do it. Because uh, Phantom Dancer, obviously, it reduces damage taken. But, um, that was a mistake. That was a mistake. And then, that was a mistake. So, definitely, he's not, he's not perfect, but he is the best. So, he's going to grab his Phage. He was looking for his full Black Cleaver, by the way. That's why he didn't recall. Um, but yeah, she uh, that was pretty sloppy from him. He could have outplayed it, but he just he didn't consider the possibility that she was in there. Um, yeah. So, the game's almost over now. What you're going to see him do here is solo the Rift Herald um, after he cleans up this jungle. Because... Basically, like, this is another thing that people don't realize when they're taking objectives, is so often, um, in a game, teams will go, oh, hey, we just killed them, let's do Baron, right? Like, in competitive games as well. Oh, we just killed them, let's do Baron, and then recall. Why do Baron and recall if you can take the enemy jungle and then Baron and recall? It's like optimizing the play. Yeah, sure, Baron's good, but why would you take Baron earlier? Because that means, one, it's going to wear out earlier, right? Two... You're not getting the free money in the jungle, so every mon every piece of money that you're losing is is actually a deficit. And then three, um, if you do the jungle and then do the Baron, it gives the other team time to think, oh, we can contest the Baron, and then you might even get a pick on top of that. So it's like wins on wins on wins. And you know, you almost 100% know that after they recall from Baron, they're going to come here and take the jungle anyway, so why not do it first and then save your Baron timings? It's just sloppy play, so it's it's good from him to see, oh, I'm going to do Herald, but it's 18.50, so I've still got another minute to do it, and I'm going to take this jungle first, and then I'm going to go top, because he's waiting for the top lane, lane to pile up. So it's just efficiency. He, if he just ran past this, or he, if he just did Herald went top, then all this is wasted, and he's never going to get it, so it's just efficiency. Uh, his team's cleaning up mid, so he's going to take this. Now watch when he, how he does Scuttle Crab. Um, most people don't realize this, but you can actually take the eye solo, soloing Scuttle Crab. So that's something interesting to see. Takes that, he goes top, gets a kill, but I think Tally's just trolling at this point. It's not really important, but focusing... I want, I want you guys to focus not on the fact that he won the game or copy everything he did. I want you to focus on how he utilized the PvE aspects. Um, so that's play versus environment aspects. And the 1v1 with Ivern, like, throughout the whole game. How we how we pressured his lane opponent. Um, also, maybe I'll show you guys how to use Rift Arrow, some you don't know. So, so he uses it here. Um, this is a bit of a mistake, honestly, from him. Uh, yeah, this is a mistake because... Uh, is it a mistake? No, it's actually not a mistake, because Rift Herald does do some damage to minions, I think. Let me check. 
Um, yeah, it does do some damage to minions, so it's worth it. Um, also means he's, he's not going to get caught from the bush. But he sees Syndra, so he's pretty safe. He pushes up, he clears the wave. And then watch watch what he does here. Um, it's actually, it's kind of small, but look at this. So, Herald's doing his chargey thing. And he knows that if Herald goes in now, he's going he's gonna to tank tower. So what Graves does is he takes a tower shot to make sure that his Herald stays as healthy as possible. And then Herald obviously destroys the tower, they push down this, and then they end the game. Good. So the last thing I'll go through is the Runes of Masteries. So as you can see here, like I said earlier, he's taken 6 attack speed um, to make up for the fact that he's not taking boots, so that's 10% basically. And then he's taking obviously attack speed in his quints, but that's pretty standard. Um, the AD, obviously you usually have 9 AD, so that's the 3 AD left over from the 6 attack speed. And then the, the blues are a bit odd, so he's basically split up magic resist and magic resist per level. Basically, magic resist flat will give him an early. This stuff is very minute, like you will not notice it in your games. If you're losing your games and you're not challenger, then runes and masteries are not your they're not your problem. As long as you have like the basic pages of, you know, nine AD, nine MR, nine armor, and then either A D for an A D page AP for an AP page, attack speed for an attack speed page. And actually, with the AP page, you want to have magic pen in your reds. But like, as long as you have those three standard pages, like runes are not your issue. Don't worry too much about it. But just so you're interested, um, he took assassin versus runic affinity. That's kind of basic uh, because he knew that Ivan's going to be invading his jungle a lot and trying to like pressure his buffs. So he might not get four buffs. I uh, sorry, he might not get three buffs uh, or even two all the time. And the 1v1, which I'm saying he's playing to his strengths, like he's taking da the 4 in damage rather than the 4 in vamp, um, because he's pressing the 1v1, fresh blood 1v1. The only thing that I think is a bit odd is he's taking Dangerous Game, not Greenfather's Gift, which is this one here. Uh, and I think the reason for that is that he knows he doesn't need the extra damage to kill, and he's worried that he's going to like 1v1 someone and then die to like a tick, um, either from Syndra or whatever. So this is this is my, basically you, the difference is this is for damage in in a 1v1 in a jungle environment utilizing the bushes and this is for team fights or like skirmishes or whatever. So this one kind of like would be better for something like Kha'Zix that you sit in bush but because he's running around so much he's not going to be in the bush, you know? He's running through river, he's running through jungle. He's not going to be like utilizing this as much and he doesn't need it. And then obviously this one versus uh, these two is just because it gives you like free damage. This one gives you damage, but you take extra damage. And this one gives you damage, but you have to kill people. So this is just better. Yeah, so that's basically it. That's uh, the end of my review of this game. So if we just cover the basic points. Uh, he spent his gold efficiently early game. He got a lead early game from invading jungle, winning the 1v1 in jungle. He was efficient in his route, like his clear. And also his gank roots, like, he, when he was ganking, he wasn't even ganking. He was literally going, okay, I farmed Krugs, and now I'm going to farm top lane. Like, that was his mindset. He was going, I'm going to go top for a gank, not because I think it's a good opportunity to gank. I'm going top for gank because it's premeditated, it's in my root. And he goes top, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. You saw it work about two times and failed once. That's fine. He didn't really focus on bot lane. Um, that's just because of the rooting, because early game he took the blue side, um, the the top side of Ivern, so that means that he's not really going to be hanging around bot lane, because he wants to control that red buff timer, he wants to control the Gromp, which is much easier to clear, the wolves that are much easier to clear, Graves loves wolves and Gromp, he hates Krogs, he hates Wraiths, because his auto attacks are like super awkward um, with that, and he has to use a lot of mana, because he has to use his Q, because the best Graves... Uh, roots don't involve you using Q at all, you just auto attack E, auto attack, um, and get resets from that. So, that's the basics of this game, if you didn't enjoy, um, then I'd, I guess you could like it. Uh, if you didn't enjoy, tell me why. Uh, still doing private coaching, not so much now, because OCS is about to start up, but um, yeah, sweet, that's been it. Let me just say goodbye, and that's it, sweet, uh, see you guys.